Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and this is my soapbox. While I may enjoy laughing at a bit of drama here and there, I had thought that my days of covering said drama were over after I retired the original format of Monastery Live. Well, to quote Al Pacino, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. For the past eight years, I've been on a crusade to expand this hobby of tabletop role-playing games that I love so much, be it through my reviews, impressions, or most important to this subject, interviews. As anyone who takes a cursory glance at my channel will see, I do a lot of interviews. A lot. With many developers and personalities within the tabletop RPG space. This is part of said crusade to expand the hobby, by showcasing the works that other people are doing, which I felt could use a bit more exposure or just wanted to help out in my own way. With only a few exceptions, I feel like both sides, myself and the people I interview, come out better after the fact. Alas, some come out worse. Enter Jameson Stone and Satine Phoenix, the two heads, or at least were, of Apotheosis Studios. Now this is a company that primarily has done extensive third-party material for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. They first entered my radar with the Warlock-themed adventure The Red Opera, Last Days of the Warlock, and more recently were working on a Bard-themed adventure called Sirens, Battle of the Bards. Now, while I've never spoken with Satine, I have had Jameson on my interview series on two occasions for both aforementioned adventures. Now, I'm not going to claim to be a big deal or anything. I know that I'm a small-time player within the TTRPG space, and I take any and all interviews that I can get. Despite that, I felt like I had a at least decent relationship with Jameson, and even was considering bringing him back for a future interview discussing the next installment of their class-based adventure series, Oath of the Paladin. But notice the key word here. I was. You see, it would appear that Jameson was not the man I thought he was. The patient zero for this seems to be Chad Rowe, a tattoo artist by trade and also someone who dabbles in TTRPGs himself. Not too long ago, he released a Facebook post detailing an experience he had with Jameson over a tattoo contract. Apparently, the act of asking for a fair rate is grounds for accusations of unprofessionalism and downright condescension, especially when he's expecting a tattoo artist to write out a contract in the way that a lawyer would write it out. Which, even most lawyers would find that a little bit unreasonable for, for all intents and purposes, a layperson to do. This happened about two years ago, and the Facebook message exchange does not look good for Jameson in this. It's only in the last few days that this was posted, largely out of fear of retaliation, given the position that Jameson and Satine have as quote-unquote industry darlings. Now that's what opened the floodgates, both within Apotheosis and outside of it. Shortly afterward, I discovered a blog post by the Renaissance Gamer, detailing several accounts of unprofessionalism, gaslighting, and bullying towards the company's own freelancers. This is going to be a pattern. See, apparently Apotheosis operates on a payment system that's far from standard, paying people in bulk after editing has been approved, using that for the purposes of word count and treating word replacements, like turning a however into a but, as words removed for the purposes of that. Apparently in at least one instance, they were paid out of pocket by the original creator of Red Opera, and not Jameson. When people remarked about this being odd, his reply was to either talk about his position or invoke a screenshot of the contract, or some other bit of gaslighting, as I mentioned before. I don't know why you'd have that specific screenshot just hanging around there, but I don't manage a company, just a temple. That alone would be bad enough, but it gets worse. They've recently been accused by DM Jason as taking credit for the concept of D&D in a castle, ousting him in the process, and Satine trying to get his D3 at C project shut down, an event that he invited her for, in favor of her own similar TTRPG cruise event, Satine Quest. And just to add on to the pile, you have the two of them being paid to make an appearance at a convention and acting like complete divas in the process, treating the people paying them as glorified coffee gophers. A similar thing apparently happened with them having the gall to treat Lost Lorne Games, Mark Ryan Hagen's company, as I've mentioned in the past, as some small-time scrub that's not worth the effort. For the record, Mark is responsible for Vampire the Masquerade, a game that they claim to have played. And this is all just the tip of the iceberg. If I went into detail on everyone's story, many of them with receipts in the form of messages from either Facebook or Discord, I could be here for hours. There seems to be a new one every day since this blew up. Of course, it didn't take long before Jameson and Satine issued an apology, of sorts. But how much of that apology is sincere and how much is PR speak is something we'll never know. 
It seems to have fallen on deaf ears, as several of their employees have become fed up, choosing to announce their coming departure after they fulfill current obligations. The irony being that Jameson and Satine were scheduled to make an appearance at this year's Origins Game Fair, but Origins has since issued a statement all but rescinding said invitation. Now you might be asking, where the hell do I come in in all this? Well, keep in mind, I interviewed Jameson on both the Red Opera and Sirens. So when all this went down, I was not happy. I went out of my way over the last two years to promote both works in whatever ways that I could, as I felt it appropriate since Jameson was willing to do interviews with me. And again, he has a much bigger footprint than I do, whereas I'm just some small-time guy who covers a lot of games that most people ignore. But the fact that all this went down, and possibly more, while he was effectively stringing me along and putting on a facade, to say that it does not sit with me would be an understatement. I had spoken highly of Apotheosis's work as part of my crusade to expand the hobby, and, spoiler warning, at one point I was even considering using the Red Opera for a return to RV Tabletop. Now, in hindsight, there were signs that I probably should have noticed, but the fact that someone I had in my temple would be so willing to abuse that trust is something I can't abide. That's what made me so angry. The fact that someone I trusted to approach in good faith was simply putting on a face while being the exact opposite of everything I wish to represent. Now, this isn't a never meet your heroes because neither of them could be considered that for me. This was a case of people using the virtues I stand for as if they're just words. And for me, the virtues that I stand for are anything but just words. Throughout history, there are various types of codes of honor, and when it comes to the virtues that I extol, I treat them just as seriously as that kind of thing. But instead of belaboring the point, I want to use this as a lesson. I've built my brand on maintaining a strict sense of integrity, not on some appearance of positivity. Unlike some, I don't have someone I can pass the buck to to give the appearance that my hands are clean. When it comes to the monastery, the buck has always stopped with me, and that's something that I continue to take very, very seriously. Now, despite this setback, I will continue to pursue the crusade I've dedicated myself to, to expand the hobby as best I can. Because for every bad apple that only cares about validating their own agenda, instead of fostering the group game that they claim to be fans of, I know that there's a hundred more people who are passionate about their work, and want as many people to see it as humanly possible. I want to see what those 100 can do. I want to explore the stories they can tell, and I want to help others see what's out there. And as a final note to the people in Apotheosis Studios outside of the culprits here, my door is always open to you, in whatever form you take. I don't hold the failings of the boss on the employees. I don't hold the sins of the father upon the son. It's not your fault that the founders let their egos cloud their judgment. The two of them may talk to no end about professionalism, but I will not. Far better to embody it than merely say it. Stay frosty.